Welcome to Practical AI. This is a course we're going to cover topics of machine learning and artificial intelligence over the next uh, three or four months. Um, this class is going to talk a lot about how we are applying machine learning and artificial intelligence today. It's going to talk a little bit about how you can use some of these tools for your own use and your own capability. We're going to learn how to build applications. Uh, we're going to do a lot of different things using artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, this isn't going to be a theoretical course. It's not going to be something where we're really focusing deeply on uh, the low-level algorithms and how these things work. We will talk about how everything works and we will talk about how to apply it but we won't actually get too deeply into uh into how to build these things from a very low level this is going to be more about the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning more so than how to develop new machine learning techniques so um what is artificial intelligence this is a really good place to start and to be able to talk about artificial intelligence we have to be able to first talk about intelligence and intelligence is a thing that we all recognize and we all understand and we can kind of all point to it and see oh this is intelligence but what does it mean you know what do we mean when we talk about intelligence well i think a good working definition of intelligence is the ability to gain new knowledge and apply it effectively you know if we think of someone who is very intelligent they're capable of learning something and they're capable of doing something with that knowledge so you know you can learn math and then you can apply math pretty effectively uh, we tend to think of uh, you know intelligence as something you know this this sort of gaining the understanding maybe it's reading maybe it's studying maybe it's being able to apply things maybe it's being able to see patterns uh, and that's kind of when we think about someone who's intelligence that's what we think of uh, we tend to think of artificial is things that are man-made you know things that humans have built things that humans have created so you know put those things together artificial intelligence is really where we take something that's man-made that can demonstrate learning and application of that knowledge and that's a really a lot of what we're going to cover over the next uh, you know like I said next couple of months so in computing, artificial intelligence can be really as simple as the, an if statement. And if we stop and think about what an if statement is on the very basic level, uh, it's, you know, you might have some kind of calculation your program has made. Uh, you might be checking to see what to do based on that calculation. And if we look back at our, our definition, well, we've, we've figured something out and we're applying that knowledge. So at the most basic, a sequence of if-else statements is really machine learning, or really artificial intelligence, not quite machine learning, well, kind of, sort of, but really artificial intelligence in and of itself. But today we think a little bit more advanced. We think more about optimization techniques, regression techniques, uh, decision trees. You know, decision trees are kind of a good way to conceptualize some artificial intelligence approaches because a decision tree can be something like, well, we have a bunch of uh, we have a bunch of information and if this is one way that we can split up the information this is another way and decision trees you know kind of hypothetically in our mind like we come to a decision point we say yes or no and we follow this path and then there's another decision point we say yes or no we follow this path so decision trees are kind of a, a, a easy way to think about something that's not super mathematical but maybe a little bit more statistical and how we can use that to apply uh, new decision making neural networks are probably the driving force behind a lot of artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques recently and then clustering techniques there's a whole variety of things this does not cover everything by any stretch but we're going to take a look at some of these and talk a little bit more further or a lot of, uh, further about all of these uh, over the next uh, several weeks um, so when we look at machine learning, really what we're doing is we're, we're using a bunch of data to increase our understanding and improve our accuracy of predictions, recognition, performance. Uh, you know, I think there are a lot of different applications of this, but ultimately, you know, like you can kind of think of this as like recommendations. You know, one of the one of the kind of early mass market of applications of machine learning that kind of hit people was uh, Netflix trying to make recommendations for people to watch things. Uh, and you know, like that's looking at a bunch of data and figuring out patterns and figuring out ways to apply that data and then using that to generate these recommendations. Um, thing about artificial intelligence today is it's everywhere, uh, whether you recognize it or not. Uh, artificial intelligence has come up in a lot of applications, everything from the most sophisticated things that you can point to, like image recognition and being able to you know, identify different actions and like sporting events is something that, that's kind of amazing that just happens today and we take it for granted. All the way up to like cars now have like lane detection and all of that is gonna be driven by different artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. Uh, and you can see like iRobot, Apple, Microsoft, Samsung, Samsung, Waymo, uh, Tesla, Google, Slack, uh, Meta, Twitter, uh, even Whole Foods and Amazon, uh, they're all applying artificial intelligence techniques. And I think over the last uh, 10 years or so, you've seen pretty much all of these companies harness this capability pretty effectively and use it for new uh, new products, new uh, new approaches to the way that they operate their businesses. 
Uh, this is one of my favorite instances of sort of how all of this started or the beginnings of the artificial intelligence uh, we'll say kind of revolution uh, back in 2014 XKCD if you're not familiar with it XKCD.com uh, it's a comic that you know, is pretty popular among uh, you know among technology types nerdy types I guess uh, but basically in 2014 they made this little comic that said you know somebody takes a picture and we want to check to see if it's in a national park in 2014 that would have been just checking to see GPS coordinates uh, easy right you know give me a few hours and see if there's a bird in the photo um, research team in five years so that was kind of the perception of what we would do with image recognition back in 2014 uh, and in 2015 uh, just it was maybe what seven months later uh, Google launched Google Photos and I think Google Photos was one of the first sort of like amazing um, image recognition applications because you put your pictures in it and then you could just search for a giraffe and it would find a giraffe in any picture to the point where if you had it, somebody had a t-shirt and there was a cartoon giraffe in the t-shirt it might find that photo uh, and you know it kind of it kind of brought this idea to the forefront and this was one of the first things that I saw that I was truly like amazed that this was the ability to apply this technology it wasn't so much that somebody had built a you know like if you've ever watched Silicon Valley uh, there's a there's a application there where it, it says this is a hot dog this is not a hot dog this is a hot dog this is not a hot dog it was not really a food detector it was more like a hot dog detector so like that kind of thing pretty much existed in 2014 2015 but the idea that you could train a model that would identify so many different keywords across so many different images this was an amazing application and I think that this is around the time when artificial intelligence and machine learning started to pervade everything that we did um, so if you look at the last 10 years, around 2012, that's where uh, I think some convolutional neural network techniques, and we'll, we'll cover what that is later, uh, but this is where you could actually do something with it. You know, So CNNs and, and neural networks in general uh, had been around for a really long time. They weren't brand new in, in the 2010s, uh, but there's a certain thing that happens very frequently uh, that drives sort of a, a technological, um, a, a dramatic increase in the adoption of technology. And that's when we take software that we have developed software that is capable and then we combine that with hardware and that hardware sometimes takes some time to catch up or to be capable enough or to be uh, cost effective enough to actually do something with it so in this case you know gpus were really good at, at doing a lot of floating point co computations and the idea that you could take a, C a convolutional neural network which required a lot of floating point computation and put those two things together it just sort of happened at the right time the right place and i think it, it was allowed it allowed um, a lot of different teams to do a lot of different things uh, across a lot of different companies and drove really dramatic expansion and made this technology more capable and more accessible to more people so this is kind of where we see things really explode we're going to talk about all of the ramifications how that's uh, caused problems in uh, ethical issues how we have encountered lots of other uh, you know lots of other challenges how companies are adopting this how they're employing it effectively how maybe they're not so employing it so effectively and we're going to get into all of this over the next couple of months so I'm looking forward to taking this trip with you. Uh, that's all we have for now. Thanks for watching.